What's up, Madden 17 fans? My name is Cody, and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. In today's video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be breaking down the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive playbook. So this is going to continue uh, along the series where basically we're just going to go through and break a playbook down. We're going to give you ins and outs. The biggest key for this is really to help you guys kind of navigate and show you that you can find a scheme out of any playbook in Madden NFL 17. So uh, first and foremost, uh, I would recommend you guys letting me know in the comments which playbooks you guys would like to see broken down. And then second, what I really wanna know is your questions. So what types of videos would you guys like to see? Do you like these play breakdowns? Would you like these in shorter format? Would you like these maybe in an ebook form? How would you like to receive this content? That's a question that I really value your guys' opinions on because I'm making this for you guys. So anyway, let's jump into the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive playbook. So single back jumbo, and remember what I look for is a couple of things. The first thing I look for is power formation. What I mean by a power formation is a formation that has a power and a counter play and also some type of running play. Uh, if you guys don't know what I mean by that, I would recommend going back and watching uh, there's a couple of videos I did on my channel where I talk specifically about what makes a power play and what makes a counter play. So I would just recommend going back and looking through that. But anyways, that's what we're going to kind of look for. So single back jumbo. As you can see, we got vertical shot, power row. Those are good plays. Vert's wide drag is, is good. But we don't have anything to the far left. So that so this formation, in my opinion, is completely out. No, no even reason to look at it anymore. Single back jumbo Z. Um, let's see, we've got two crossing routes, that's good. Uh, we got a corner route, that's good. So we got a little bit of something here, but I, they don't have a power O, so in my opinion, that formation's out. Single back ace, we have halfback blast, which is a pretty good run there. PA rollout, which is good. Z spot, halfback toss. Halfback toss is okay because they're auto motion. Not exactly a big fan of that. O one one trap, outside zone. Not too bad but they don't have anything to the far left, far outside. They only have in-breaking patterns. Ace pair, we have the PA post dig shot, which is probably a pretty good route. Counter weak, the power O, we all know how I feel about that play. Uh, wide receiver drive, tight end tack. Nothing in this one either to the far left, so that's out on my opinion. Ace pair twins, really a big fan of this formation. Uh, from the Arizona Cardinals playbook. You guys probably saw me break that down in the Arizona section, but nothing much here. Single back bunch. I've been wanting to do something with this formation for a long time, and we'll see. We might be doing it here. Let's see. Z spot. Now that's interesting. That route on Z spot is not the normal post route. They have spot dig, which is really good. Quick pitch, verticals. PA end around. Actually, PA end around is really good with that post route or that corner route. We have a couple of things we can do here. Let's uh, let's come back to single back bunch in a minute. I pro. I form pro. You've got power O, which is good. You've got PA. You got draw. You got corner route, but no post route. Actually, we have a post route. You can get you can do something with this iform pro if we want to. iform close. Only have zone runs, no power, no power O, so that's a big no no for me. I pro twins. ISO counter. They got post wheel, which is a really good play. They got ooh, this is gonna be a good one. So they've got everything you need for an iform twins. So this is probably gonna be our red zone set. I form tight pair. Um, they got the power, which is good, but they don't have um, anything else that I would really want to mess with. Strong Pro. Let's see what they've got here. F Trail. Ooh, that looks like a good play. Mount Motion Toss. I have spacing off of that. Not too bad. Not too good. But definitely not too bad if I wanted to work with it a little bit. Put the tight end off the line of scrimmage. You got PA, so we would flip this. They have a fullback screen, which is interesting. 
um, six, eight, nine hook, but nothing really too special. Strong tight pair. We talked about this um, formation, I think, when we were breaking down the Colts, maybe the Cardinals playbook. We talked about this post shot, PAFL slide, um, and but they don't. The only problem with this is the power O is an auto motion run, which is not what I wanted to see. So you can make this work, but probably not the best place to go. Weak pro. Um, let's see, you've got PAFL slide, which is a good running play. Give me some kind of something here. They don't have anything else though. PAFL slide is a good play action play, I'm sorry. Weak close, flanker drive, power O, auto motion, auto motion, auto motion. Not bad, but not exactly what I'm looking for. Weak pro twins. Wide receiver dig. That's a pretty good play. Power O is a good run. But they don't have any corners. Nothing to the far left. So to me, that's not a big deal. Weak tight pair. Power O. Again, it's auto motion. That's a big deal to me. But this is very similar to that strong tight pair. So you could probably make that work. Split slot. Now this is an interesting formation. Uh, this play double ends here. Looks interesting. Halfback butt, fullback inside. PA will switch. A bunch of interesting route concepts. Uh, we've got a post route. We've got C routes. This is something that I might want to explore a little bit. So we'll come back to this as well. Um, the cool part about it, well, the only problem is it, I wish it was. I wish that guy was a tight end. They got doubles here as well. I'll show you this. So gun doubles, um, you have Y sale, which is a really good play. Weak flood is a good play. Uh, Bucks drive, halfback wheel is a very good play. Z spot's a good play. Uh, corner strike, they have a lot of options here from their gun doubles. Let's take a look at their bunch. Um, we all know how I feel about the bunch. They've got the Bucks sale. They've got the verticals, slip screen, Z spot. They've got this interesting little Bucks bunch play. Corner strike, bunch trail. They don't have PA post, unfortunately, so that's a big miss. The tight flex, and they have everything in this thing. So the tight flex is interesting because Cole Beasley, Des Bryant, Terrence Williams. So it's a three by one. Okay, so it's eleven personnel. That means it's going to be the same personnel as everything else that I'm looking at. They have wide receiver cross, which is a good play. Halfback option, bench, of course, is a good one. Wide receiver corners is a good one. The problem is they don't have anything. Well, they got PA slot options. I guess you can use that. This isn't too bad of a formation. We may come back to that. Gun spread. Quill flats, one of my favorite plays. HB option, good play. Flanker dig is a really good play. Deep attacks, okay. But again, the post routes, left side post. Left side post. They don't have a right side post. That's a big deal. Normal Y flex. You have smash corners. No C routes. It's not that big of a something. Spread flex weak is an interesting little package here. Corner strike. Curl flat, but they don't have anything else. Doubles flex. There's your post route on the left side. Left side post. Flanker dig has a post wheel combination. Nothing to the right side. That's a big, big deal to me. Slot seam. This is a good play. Um, got a, has a levels concept built in. Double slants. Probably a good route to that left side receiver. We may need to look into that a little bit. Deep corner. This, this formation's got some really interesting things to it. The only problem is it doesn't have. Well, it does have a post route, but it doesn't have a Z. Well, it does too. It has that. This buck trips might be something. So we'll look at that as well. Empty base, quarterback draw, Y corner is a great play. Y post is a pretty good play. Y receiver screen, four verticals. So basically the standard five wide. Empty base flex, Y corner, verticals, Y receiver. So pretty much the same. All right, so let's come back to this. So with all that in mind, Kind of looking through here, I want to try the split slot out first um, because I think it would be pretty neat. So let's look at that. So we've got fullback inside, quick audibles. We got the off tackle, 
corner strike, slants, which is a pointless play. And then we have PAFL slide. What we'll need to do with this formation is flip it so that when we run play action, um, so we need to flip this whole thing. So those little things are little details you need to figure out. So first and foremost, who do we want running the fullback inside? We want McFadden in there. Who do we want? Um, I'm going to go with, uh, eh, no, I'm going to go with McFadden. So we're going to flip it. We're going to come out and fill back inside. And for right now, anyways, and we'll show you some things. So immediately what comes to mind is you have a three headed rushing attack. Halfback, whoops, I don't know what I just did there. I was trying to run it to Zeke. Huh, that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know if you guys saw what just happened. That's it was really interesting. So we'll show you that. Uh, let me show you this in the play call screen. So McFadden and Zeke. So we're in split slot. If you look at the formation, you'll see that McFadden is on the right side and Zeke is on the left side. Okay. So if I come out and I want to flip the play because I want to flip the formation, right? We come out and you'll see. You would think that Zeke and McFadden would flip, but actually they don't. So when so the only thing that changes. So I could run McFadden or Zeke just based off of Cole Beasley. So I can motion Cole Beasley all the way to the left and then watch. I can actually flip the play. So I'll hit square our trigger and we just go. So that's an interesting little uh, little subtle detail I think that's really important that really will you know, pay dividends I think a lot when you think about it. So it's just interesting, it's kind of neat. So it's something you can definitely experiment with and see if you guys like it. The cool part is you can play some games with the motion. So for example, you know, we're set up to run it that way, but then we motion call all the way across and they may follow him. We flip the play, he has no idea, and we run it this way. So that's just something little that you can check out uh, if you want. Halfback off tackle is uh, a little bit more of a wider run, but as you can see here, it's not too bad. So those are very viable options. I'm, I'm trying to figure out if the fullback inside is really, really more of an, if it can get me the inches I need on the interior. So if I come right in here, you know, that's kind of what I'm looking at right now, but I think we'll be okay. Okay, so now what we want to do is work PAFL slide. So if we go PA slide, thinking Dak's gonna roll out and we can hit Dez on this post route deep. Now, the key to PAFL slide is twofold. Number one, the play action. Number two, the rollout and being able to check it down to Zeke on this quick flat. So those are important keys. The second thing, Cole Beasley's route will get in the way. So we want, let's try putting him on just a standard in route. We should get more room to hit Des over the top. Let's run that back with a, um, let's run that back with like a cover three. So we just put Zeke on, or we put Cole Beasley on a, actually we could put Cole Beasley on a slant route and motion him in like this. That'll be man to man, like that. And then there's room to hit that route to Dez. So you have two quick crossers that you can hit. Or if you wanted to, I mean, you can do whatever you want. One thing that might be interesting is to put Zeke on an in route, leave everybody else on their same thing, but now we're levels. Only problem is Zeke gets caught up there, so we don't want that. What we could do, see this is kind of how you evolve a play, put Zeke on a streak so that he kind of replaces and that's going to be a difficult play now because what happens in cover three, especially because this is a balance set, if they play cover three or really even cover two, that route to Zeke is important or if we even put him on a real route because it's going to allow the opening over the middle of the field, as you can see right there. Just something very, very subtle that you could do. Again, you have the, uh, the quick little run to Zeke, which I think is going to be incredible, especially with a battle-ready guy or something like that. I mean, this, this run looks really, really powerful. And you have the halfback off tackle as well off of it. You can also do some other things with motion. And flipping the play, I think, is the coolest part. 
the fact that we when we flip the play, like they literally have no idea outside of where Cole Beasley's positioned. You know, so and as you can see, this thing is that run is pretty effective. So let's look at um, so that's PAFL slide. I think that's pretty fair what we want to do. Just kind of roll, 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 and hit that right there. It's really what we're looking at. The other thing, though, is, and this is why we want to put Cole Beasley on an in route, is because he's our quick read. If, if something goes bad, that's where we're going with the ball. We could even put him on a maybe something like this. I like that because it's going to make it difficult for them when they start usering and doing different things. Um, let me try one other option though. Something like that. Putting Cole Beasley or putting uh, Ezekiel Elliott. The cool part about this play is the deep post route to L or to, to Des Bryant. So the question then becomes we could put Zeke on a quick out. No, that doesn't hold anybody there. The key is to figure out how to hold people, how to hold defenders. So we'll show that. We'll try this cross. That wasn't too bad. Let's try Zeke on a curl, Cole on a drag. Comes across. That's your first read right there, that quick crosser. Then if that's not open, roll, 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 boom. You got that open. If we cannot get pressured, so you can roll. Okay, he comes inside. Well, dang it. This is kind of a hard uh, cadence, in my opinion, to fit or a hard transition. Room, and then you want to roll, 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 roll. Set up and throw deliver it you got Des open you don't have to roll with Dak if you don't want to the reason I'm saying to roll out is just because I think it makes the play work better if he's in motion or he's rolling out okay so you know again you're just gonna slide, 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 and wham, there's that right over the top of them. The pro only problem I can foresee is spacing. You can fix that by running the in route and the, and the seam on top of it, or something like that. Let's try to leave, let's leave Zeke on his route now. That actually, wasn't, that actually wasn't too bad. Let's put Cole Beasley on a hitch route. Smart route is hitch route so that it goes about 5 to 10 yards. That holds them really well, I think. Only problem is, so that's where a couple of things you got options. Um, the cool part is with this play, you have motion that you can utilize. So we can bring him in like this. That way he's kind of like that. So there's several things you can do with this. Um, and the, the, the reason that I'm being so um, somewhat um, anal about it is I think it's just really get this right because these route combinations are just really, really powerful. Let me take a look here. So we motion Cole in. We've got that quick read. Got that, got that, nothing, and then we can hit Dez over. The reason you want to change Cole's Beasley's route, in my opinion, um, it's a good route on its own, but it gets in the way of Dez's route. Um, let's see what happens when we motion him in. See, it's just they're too close behind one another for my own good. What you might even do is something like this. Put him on a zig, motion him in, so it takes him so long to develop but it clears out that opening, as you can see there. So there's different things you can do with this. Let's go to corner strike. Um, let's start talking about that. So corner strike, the cool part is you have these quick table routes to the backs. Now, in my opinion, what you need to do is you need to decide 
which side you're wanting to throw it to. So I would suggest throwing this to the wide side of the field, whatever the wide side of the field is, whether, you know, and if you're in the middle of the field, then just pick a side, okay? But basically, this is set up for success to the, to the right, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna put Zeke on a streak and Dez is gonna be on an in route, okay? And that's pretty much it. Now, if I had my pick, I would run this play to the right side every time, okay? Just because of some things we can do. So we're gonna motion cool in just like always. He's gonna come in like that. Again, remember, that's our quick read right there. Okay? So if that works like that, and then we'll show you again. Motion and Cole Beasley. And then Dez is going to be coming under right about there, which is a good spot for him to come under. So your reads are going to be a quick flat to the right. If that's an open, come back to the left. If that's not open, look to these C routes. Um, the C routes are really effective. You can pass lead them open at different points. Another cool part about the C route, um, or a cool cool part about this play in general, is just that you can bring Cole Beasley in motion like this, and he's going to run a like an inverted out route. Now, again, I know it's not that big of a deal, but when you think about it, if we're if we're running this fullback inside and we're messing around with our motions, what's important is what you can do off of it as well. So what we could do is something like this, motion Cole Beasley. Uh, dang it, I thought he was gonna try that again. Corner strike, and we're gonna motion Cole, and we're gonna wait till he gets over here, and then we're gonna kind of fake like we're gonna bring him back and snap it. So moves, snap it. And now you have a little, a little nice little uh, delay route there that you can work with if you want to. The cool part about it is, especially if they're running man-to-man, -man, you now have options. Another thing you could do, though, is you could do something like this. And this is just going to be another, another opportunity you have at hitting another target. Again, it's the same concept as corner strike. The only difference is you're now motioning this guy in there. So we'll show you what happens if they're in man to man. And you could just leave Cole Beasley set like this if you want. But when he cuts to the outside, it's going to be wide open. Easy pickings all day. Okay. So that's why you would want to run something like that. Now, the cool part also that you want to look at is against man to man, do these table routes beat man to man this year? They actually don't do that good of a job. So that's something important to know. Um, is that if you get man-to-man -man coverage and you're banking that you're going to be able to hit one of these table routes, you know, it's not always going to be the case and you're not going to be able to hit them for a big-time gain, okay? So that's corner strike. Let me talk a little bit more about it. So Zeke Elliott, you know, you can do a couple things with Zeke um, on this. If you wanted to, you could put him on a streak. That's what we were doing. The only problem I foresee with that is that he's just not going to be. So I would put him on a wheel route, something like this. The reason is because it's going to give just more field spacing. Um, right in there is where you're going to hit Dez anyway. So you can do that again. You can and you can tinker a little bit with it. Do whatever you want. I mean, you're, it's your it's your game. But those are some of the things that I would do. Again, and I would run. I'm telling you, this fullback inside run is really good. You get that nice double team in there. It's going to be very, very difficult for them. We'll show you a couple of, let me show you here. So we'll flip the play. So we're going to run it to the left. And by all means, they look like they have us locked up here. What you can do is you can cut this run back. Um, and as you see, they just hold their blocks really well. So this is something that I think it's going to be a big deal. Whoops, we got blowed up there. I think this is going to be a really, really big deal once you start getting, um, you know, up the ranks. This is a, a really powerful running play. The cool part about it is you have this off tackle, and if you're patient with this run, I think it could be a really good run because it's a basically it's a power sweep. Um, it's a power sweep to the outside. You just kind of follow the blocks, stay small, don't try to cut it back because you can't. Um, if I tried to cut it back, as you see, he's right there in a contain. It's going to take some miracle for me to even get five yards. Okay, so 
I think the running is really powerful from this formation just because man the fullback dive is really really good as you can see it's better than the fullback inside from split close I will tell you that so okay so there's that and we went over PA slants there's not really anything I wanted to go over from slants you can just throw it if you want you can you can mess around with that a little bit so let's get out of this and let's show you some other plays from this formation. So split slot, and this is from, uh, let's go over this play double ends here. It's from the Tampa Bay Bucks playbook as well. All right, so double ends. You got, a, you got this really cool little route there. Uh, oh, remember, we flipped the formation, okay? So it's going to be to the right side. So now we've got a couple of things that we need to figure out. You know, what do we do with Cole Beasley? Um, you know, what do we do with Des Bryant? Those things are important to figure out. So the biggest thing is, is recognizing that probably most teams are going to be in cover two. This route to Cole Beasley is really, really cool because it's um, if they don't have a hard flat, you can complete it for a quick five to ten yards. Um, so we'll, and we'll run it. We'll run it to the left. Just imagine it flips. So bring Cole and Beasley in motion. Cool part is you also have this route to Zeke, which sits a really, and that's a brilliant route in zone, zone defense, in my opinion. So you just bring Cole Beasley to the outside. What he's going to do um, is he's going to bring zone. They're going to have to have something to cover him, but normally he's actually going to be wide open. It's a speed out, similar to what we went, what I would run last season. Um, so there's that. I like the two routes out of the backfield. So your first read is going to be X. Your second read is going to be triangle. So X, triangle. And then from there, you're going to go right there to Terrence Williams. Okay. Now, Terrence Williams' route is, is, is actually one of the best routes in the game. Um, but, but, but it's against zone. This is where you might want to put McFadden on an um, a option route. Because if he's on an option route, that means you can high point that route to Terrence Williams. Actually, no, it doesn't really. That's not going to affect it any. Actually, let's try. Let's try putting Zeke on an option route. You got to tinker with it a little bit. Yeah, now he's open. As you can see there, now he's wide open. So, so there's that. The route to Des Bryant is very, very long developing, as you can see. What you can do is you can smart route his route. If you smart route it, it's really, really short. So that means that he's going to come open right there. And it's a really, really, I mean, as you can see, it's its an easy route to really do a, a lot with the spec catch. You can run this crosser but to, to Colby's over the middle, but it doesn't do what you want it to do anyway. So I would recommend against it. But if you if you set it up like this, you smart route does Brian's route, so it's just they're gonna kind of rub off one another. This route's a real this plays really good for the goal line too. But we'll show you something like this. And again, if you want to, you can put Zeke on a uh, option route or a curl route so that against zone he can get some separation. Whoops. Might not be able to smart route the route and still get the quick pass. Unless and if they're playing soft squats, um, you know, Cole Beasley might be covered as well. This is cloud, or these are soft squats actually. These are soft squats. So if they're playing traditional Tampa 2 coverage, which most people will probably be utilizing the soft squats, I think there are a select few that will use the Tampa 2. But if they're using Tampa 2, this will be open all day long. And it's just a quick little route. Now, if you want Cole Beasley's route to be more open against the cover 2, leave Des Bryant on his route. Don't smart route it. If you do that, you'll see he's wide open over there for 5 to 6 yards on a quick out, as you can see. Cool part is against man-to-man, -man, it also works. So we'll show you that. We'll audible here to, to, to cover 2, man. And we'll show you this. So he doesn't get bumped. It's just a quick speed out, six yards, and a cloud of dust type of thing. Now, if they go hard flat, 
they should be able to at least get in the way here. So they're going to go hard flat. So Cole Beasley now on his quick out, not open. But you can hit Dez. Um, you can hit Dez. There's a specific way you have to do it. You have to throw it right. I, I was wrong there. You have to throw it right as he breaks to the outside, so right before he breaks to the outside. So in and then just like that right there. And it works like a C route. Okay. So there's just little things like that. This play has a lot of options. I mean, the route to Terrence Williams is phenomenal. I mean, it's literally, you can high, high point it, and it's, it works like a post route, but it's actually an in route. The cool part is it makes it really, really effective for the goal line as well. So if you want want you you know you want it to, to work well on the goal line, then you have that option. So we'll show you that again here. Um, one thing you can do is put Cole Beasley on an out route. If you do that, it's going to make that play work a little better. Again, not exactly what we wanted. But if you bring him on a crosser, then I guess you can still. That middle linebacker is going to be normally controlled by a user player anyway. If we take Cole Beasley and put him on a crossing route, i.e. a drag or something like that, He's going to come across. He doesn't have any effect whatsoever, and you're going to run into each other. You don't want that to happen. What you want to happen is you want him to get open, Terrence Williams, like that right there. You want to high point it and kind of pass lead it up vertically against cover two. Against cover three, you'll see it's a lot easier to run this play. But it's still the same you know, level of reads here. So, And against cover three, a lot of times that will be more open that route to Cole Beasley will. And you also have, and I mean, as you can see, we've always had these little check down routes, which is why I think it makes them so effective. And I'll show you some things you can do with this uh, route to Des Bryant as well. So if you smart route it, you can wait for him to come all the way back across. And again, it's a, just a, it's just an aggressive, an aggressive catch. If you, if you want to, smart route it and when he turns to the outside you can kind of fit it in uh, against man you can't really do it against zone but if you let him no you can't get it in there if you uh, quick throw it too you might be able to get it in but no so you just want to mess around with it a little bit kind of see um, but if you look at it here step up step up step up step up time in the pocket and then you know it's just one of those things that you can really go up and get this this one so that's one reason why you know this makes this play really really effective is because it's just it gets a in a very tender area of the field so but again when you start establishing this route to Cole Beasley they have to come underneath if they don't play a hard flat they're screwed um, and if they play a hard flat then you can hit that in the seam right there so it makes it very difficult to defend this play. Just because this quick speed out to Cole Beasley really sets the tone. Um, we'll show you here. So if they're playing cover two sink, you'll know it because he can't get out there and you can easily get a quick 10 yards. So again, just something little that you can do. One thing you can also do is put Zeke on a wheel route. You can motion him out. Maybe something like this. And it will open that post up more. So there's that option as well. PAFL slide. The cool part is the post comes from opposite sides. So on this play, it's to the circle receiver. On the other play, it's to the square receiver. And then with corner strike, you can run corner routes off of both. Another thing that I haven't really messed with a whole lot is motioning in the corner routes. So if you motion him in a little bit, um, it actually gets in a really interesting, you get in an interesting spot because if you motion Williams in and just kind of start snapping it, um, you're actually able to fit it in a little easier against soft squats. So that's just a quick tip on C routes if you wanted it. 
So we'll show you this here. You can also do that, but that doesn't really create high velocity of uh, accusations. Yeah, so I mean, and that's the thing is against cover two, which is majority is what you're gonna, I mean, the majority you're gonna face cover two. If it's man to man, I'll show you this real quick. If it's man to man, dang it, having trouble. If they go to man and you smart route the route, it becomes unbumpable and you can get it like a back shoulder type of thing. But again, you know, it kind of has to be man to man, it's not good. I don't want to play just designed to you know defeat certain things, but as you can see, you can still do it, and it works fairly well. I want to show this in the red zone really, really quickly because this is where this play is really going to be good. So in the red zone, what you can do, if you put Des on this smart routed route, he's going to come on the back side like that, and he's just going to teabag him. As you can see, you want to want to throw. So to give you a little bit more of what I'm doing. I just smart routed Dez's route. When he come back to the inside, throw it and just high point it. Okay, you wanna, you wanna click on and be aggressive. But the route that really is money is this circle receiver, Terrence Williams, his route. So what you, I mean, you would literally set it up exactly the same. But now Dez will be smart routed. So no, 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 no. And then you got that right there in the back. And that's a really, It'll be tough for them to defend it because what most people will do is they will turn those vertical uh, deep blues. And as you can see, I mean, you can just drop it right in. I mean, it's just a really, it really is just a tough throw. What I would recommend doing is putting Cole Beasley on an out when you're in the red zone. That way you've got more room. And then, honestly, actually, what I would probably recommend doing, putting Cole on an in route. I didn't realize that route went all the way out there like that. Yeah, and there you are. So there's that. Another thing you could do um, is motion in Williams and then snap it. So it takes a little bit longer. It gives him a little bit more time to get open. But as you can see, not dropping it in there for him right yet. You just, it's a possession catch in the back. Catching traffic, spec catch is what you want to look for there too. Um, and you could also do it. You could also do it to an extent. Let me see if this works. Oh, dang it, almost worked. See, I think they run this route. Dang it, ain't working. Let's try it one more time. See, that's kind of cool right there because, I mean, there's no way they can affect your. Ooh, nice play, Devin. Yeah, that's what you do. You just get in prax mode. You throw these routes 100 times. That looks to be like the best strategy uh, right there is wait for him. So don't smart ride his route. Wait for him to come back and then just pass it into the inside and kind of try to cut it off like a normal user catch in the back of the end zone. Another thing you could do if you smart route his route, you still get the same kind of thing. So just high point it. You don't even have to click on, I think. Let's keep working with this a little bit. I think this, there might be something to this play. Just possession catch, yeah. Yeah, so if you, if you don't click on, Madden will uh, make the catch itself for you as you can see there, and he's gonna be right in the back of the end zone. So it's a very tender spot to be in. The cool part about it again, is you have these check down options that are there as well. And you look in light, and then left, and then back right. You don't, and oh, real quick on the pass lead, you don't wanna pass lead him to the back. You wanna pass lead him inside like that, like come like it's almost like a inside in route that you're that's how you're gonna pass it I think that would be three o'clock on a clock maybe even five o'clock would be a good one so this is just a really good play for user catching the the play on the right is or the route on the right is the same type of thing okay what will happen is they're gonna take this deep third defender away I'm telling you right now that's just the way they go 
that's where this route's going to be really effective in the back of the end zone because they're going to be so busy trying to worry about so what you can do is if they have a deep defender which they probably even won't have that you know and that that right there will be a uh, is because i passed leather the wrong way but yeah it's just a nice little back of the end zone type of thing let me try to put a, com a comeback on here no nope, that ain't gonna work I need like a C, let's try a C route in the red zone. So same kind of thing, but now he goes to the outside. Look at that. You might have to smart route it. So if you smart route a C route in the red zone, I want him to get right in the back corner. Boom. So that's what you do. I mean, you just experiment, 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 right? Another thing you could do, um, in the red zone, you a corner strike. You got cool easy little route. Um, it's really, really effective. We might be able to get him in the back. Possession catch that. You might have to click on. But this is kind of what you want to do. You just want to keep tinkering and tinkering and tinkering. A little back of the end zone. The normal problem that people don't realize is they use, they don't use all of their red zones. And you have, you know, five or ten yards in the back there to make something happen. See, right there is what you want. Nice little possession catch in the back of the end zone. And this is against cover two sink. Let's try uh, bringing Cole Beasley across here and see what we get. That ain't too bad. Let's put Dez on a quick out. Something like this. Look at that. That's that has got to be something there to it. That's a good little route. You know, and, and again, if you get something like this, maybe a swap. Just trying to become more creative. No, we don't want it to come that flat though. So we need maybe what if we put Des on a what if we put Des on a smoke screen? Nope, he's not getting he's not getting enough depth. For some reason he's running it a little short. That's why you just keep tinkering. Just keep tinkering, just keep tinkering. There it is. Boom, look at that. I'm telling you, that's a dot. That's going to be hard to defend in the red zone because this is cover two sink. Purples won't get out there in time. Like, how would you, you I mean, the only way would be to go to. Ah, that's not going to work. So we're going to have to put Dez on a out route or what we could maybe do is put him on a zig. Boom, feet down. So we're bringing Cole Beasley in motion, get him out, 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 and bam. We screw up something like that. We still have that to come back to the right side. So, yeah, there's just a lot of options here, guys. I mean, this is kind of what goes into, you know, labbing and figuring things out. But you see that you find the interesting route, and then you work and work and tinker and tinker and tinker. Next thing you know, you've got a really good red zone play. As you see, that possession catch is tough. Um, when you couple that with you know some other opportunities that you might be able to do. So if we went to corner strike, the difference would be that this would be more in the back corner specifically. Like right there, right? That would be where we're targeting. Let's, let's tinker with that a little bit too and show you kind of that process. We could even just motion him in like this, let him get to the back, jet across like that. There's a high point. The cool part about this offense is there's just a lot to defend, as you see there. Okay, so that's that. We'll uh, we'll back out of that. Uh, I've shown you enough red zone stuff, probably. We've got about ten minutes here. 
Let's see if I can. Um, I'll show you this one other thing on this. The route to Terrence Williams, I believe, is unbumpable too. Nope, it is not. But when he cuts to the inside, he's going to win. So there's that as well. Let's see. Any other thing? The only problem is this is the only formation you can run. You can't audible into another formation. However, for me, that's not really an issue. Dax just a little bit overthrowing here. Okay, so let's get out of this. Let's see if there's anything else I wanted to break down from this formation. Half back gut. I need to look at that run too. Kind of see if there's a difference. We'll come out half back gut. We forgot to flip it. Oh, PA will switch. I wanted to look at corner strike. We did. We looked at that one. 46 wide cross. I'm not going to look at that one. Slot flood. Probably not going to even worry about it. Wide receiver under. Not really going to look at it. 689 hook. Maybe look at it. Double ends is money. Let's look at halfback gut here. So it's a little delay run. That's interesting. A little, little delay. That's kind of like a draw. Not not as good blocking as you can see. But it might be a good. No, as you see, because the thing is, 93 is getting inside pursuit. However, what most people will do from nickel is they'll pinch their line. No, that doesn't make a difference. Let's see if we bring Cole Beasley in motion, if that changes anything. There's a cutback lane. You don't get any double teams on this one. That makes it kind of hard. You can run halfback off tackle, and the guy stands up, and you're much more likely to be able to be effective. So there's that. <laughs> Halfback gut. Let's see if we got any. Yeah, it doesn't look, not looking good right now for halfback gut. We'll go PAFO slide, sling it all over the yard. Throwing lasers. Okay. So probably not gonna I mean we may experiment with it some in the game with different looks and things like that. Or if he's dropping if he's dropping a lot of guys back in coverage, what some people will do. Is they'll do something like this. If they do something like this, that's where I'll run halfback gut probably. But if he's just standing up, it's going to be kind of foolish to run it. Okay, let's get out of that. Let's go over PA wheel switch. So let's see. PA wheel switch. So the cool part about PA will switch post routes coming from the left, whereas when we're running double ends, the post routes coming from the right. Okay, so PA. I don't know about the PA. If I would keep the PA on, I probably wouldn't. What I like about this is you've got that will route to Cole Beasley. So we'll probably put Zeke on an option route. And that will probably be all the adjustments we do. Actually, let's put let's put Zeke on an option route and let's put McFadden on an out route. McFadden's gonna be our first read to the right. If he's not open, boom, boom, boom. Then you've got your post route coming over the middle. We have those quick options to the backs. Um, you could even do a little double in route, a little cross, if you wanted to. In my opinion, it's just not very effective. Not that it's not cute or pretty, it's just not effective. So what I would do is just something like this, or double option routes. You could do that if you wanted, and they're just going to sit, and then you have these, you know, deep in breaking patterns. One thing I would probably do is put Williams on a comeback route. And just use the post route as your only middle route to breaks just because of a uh, play flow as a whole Cole Beasley on the back shoulder if they go man to man you 
You have the post, you have the two in routes. If they go man to man, you have the post, you have the two out routes. The wheel route, um, if you want to experiment with high pass leading it to the outside, is kind of decent. It's not perfect by any means, but it's kind of decent. What I always like about this though, is at any moment in time, you could go max protect, put Cole Beasley on an out route, Williams on a in route, max protect and just bomb it to that high point pass if you wanted to against um, you know heavy blitzing defenses or whatever or you could just go um, maybe put Williams on a drag work the pocket a little bit get some time hit him for a big gain if you wanted to so there's there's this this place flexible but again the key is going to be just that post route um, if you wanted to uh, leave that play action on, you could um, and hit this right there as he's coming out. That's an interesting little route that you could work with a little bit. If you cancel the play action, just kind of dump it off to the back there. As you can see, though, it's not very consistent. Like right in there, but you see he's just turning around. So, and if you want to, I mean, you know, I mean, if you wanted to, you can wait for him to hook up and then deliver it but it's not gonna be a big gainer for you. This route to McFadden also, same kind of thing. And we could go into four wide, as you see, we very quickly, you know, all of a sudden now we're in a four wide type of look. These wheel routes are, you know, kind of finicky against cover two, as you guys know. But this post route's obviously your bread and butter. If we wanted to, we could put Zeke on an out route, McFadden on an option route, something like this, and maybe try to work, you know, Zeke against cover two. He'll be open more times than not. Um, let's show you this again. So we're playing cover two sync. You see Zeke's wide open out of the backfield um, for a quick read. So that's there um, if you want it to be. If we motion Zeke to the left, he's going to come into a trip. So now we're in trips left. So you can just do different things with your formation when you do stuff like that. But as you can see there, that post route's very consistent. You can also just run a standard drag streak combo. Um, that wasn't a good one, a good play there. Something you can also do is work the delayed slant a little bit, work it in the slot. So motion, let him delay and then he'll come underneath. So there's you know all kinds of things you can do with this. But yeah, and then halfback off tackle. Um, but in my opinion, it's all gonna start with that fullback inside. That's gonna be your primary play. Um, let me see if I have anything else I wanted to share with you guys. Fullback inside's a money. I mean, it's, it's gonna make you some money. Slot flood, if I put the slot on a C route. What you can do with the slot flood is kind of work it as a counter. Six, eight, nine hook um, is an interesting play. I'll share that with you and then we'll be done for today because I'm going to use this probably in the red zone. But um, so six, eight, nine hook. You've got this quick route to Zeke out of the backfield which is all right i mean you might as well just put him on an out route out routes beat man to man so there's that as well so just put him on an out um i would put des on a comeback route terrence williams let's see how this kind of works that's where you're going to want to hit anyways so what i would do with terrence williams Got Dez on a comeback route. I would put Terrence Williams on a on a slant. Let's see how that looks. Slant. Dang it. Screwed up. We can't run him on a slant. Can't run him on an out route. If we if we run it like this. Dang it. Let's put Let's do this. 
We got that streak. Yeah, I don't know. This play won't be uh, too terribly effective. However, if we did something like this, it's cover two. No, it's not there. So we'll very rarely use this play. And that route could be potentially effective. What does the Tampa 2 say against it? Left, right, left, boom. Yeah, this is going to be a, that's not going to be a good play to run. All right. So, PAFL slide. We have that. Gosh, these Patriots are just block shedding like their job. So what we're going to do with PAFL slide is pretty simple. We're just going to put Cole Beasley on an in route or a zig, but more than likely it's going to be a, an in route. And then we're going to read it right to left. We have corner strike, which you want to just run it to the wide side of the field, whichever side you want to go to. Um, and you're going to run the levels on the back side. So right in there. What you could do, I think I should experiment a little bit more with motion than I have in this video. But what you could do, if you're running corner strike, bring McFadden to the right side. He's going to go in as a tight end. He's now going to cross real quick across the middle. Still gets out there. So there's, there, there's that. I mean, there's just so many options with this little formation here. If we wanted to go into trips, something like this, you know, this would be good too to run levels because it's going to open that up, open that alley up more because now there's there's two people running the route. If you put Zeke on a wheel route. See how that looks. Nothing really happening there. That didn't look very good. So there's just a lot of different options. Okay. But yeah, this is pretty much the, uh, the Tampa Bay playbook. There's certainly other things you can look into. Um, I'll show you one thing, one other formation I wanted to share with you because the rest of them, you've probably seen them before. Buck trips come out in the play slot scene. We'll just go against random play. You have stick, four verticals, P-A-W-N, and base. You have base, which base is from trips spread like that is pretty good. Okay, so you have that. But you have the levels play on that left side that we really love, that right there, that little route. Okay, and you just trust that route, throw it, throw it 100 times, man. I mean, it just... This route literally will make you millions. And that route is just a freaking monster. It's very difficult to stop. Um, you know, if they're not right over the top, you can literally just kind of throw it. The only problem is if something like that happens, and you can solve that by motioning Colby'sley in. You motion him in, he's no longer, they can't press him. Okay? So just little things like that that you pick up on. This route to Terrence Williams, pretty good against man, as you can see. As far as uh, cover two, let's see how this looks against cover two. You have levels on that left side. Okay, so you know multiple options here, but in my opinion, this is really the way you want to be going. Um, if you don't want to run, like I said, if you don't want to run split or slot or whatever that I, the formation I was running earlier, then run this formation. Just be for if for no other reason than the route to Des Bryant. Literally, it just works. Okay, and it's the levels concept. What I would honestly do: motion Cole Beasley in a little bit. You got your motion. You're looking to X first, then you're looking to 
Des Bryant's route. And it's just a quick little one to two. So you're looking middle safeties, nothing right down there. Okay, and if that's not open in some in some instances, it won't be. Then you just hit Cole Beasley. The problem is going to be, as you see here, their depth is. So what you might have to do is when they get pressed, they pretty much run the route the same depth, which is not good. So what you might do is put Cole Beasley on a fade, and that's going to pull, you know, more and more, more opportunities for Des Bryant. So there you have it. That's pretty much what I'm going to be doing from this playbook. Not a whole lot of complicated things. I mean, you could definitely make it very complex, but in my opinion, it's best to keep things simple. I try to do that. So. So that's what we've got for you. If you guys like this series, do me a favor, share it with somebody, okay? Share it with a friend, just post it, share it on Facebook, maybe a text, something like that. Just get this video to people. Let them see it, let them have it, let them share uh, in the community. Also, really important, ask good questions. Ask questions when I'm doing longer videos like this. Thank you guys so much for watching, and do me a favor, share this with one person.